South Africa's latest GDP numbers paint a shocking picture of the country's economy. One of the sector's hardest hit has been agriculture. Agricultural production fell by nearly 30% in the second quarter of 2018. It follows a more than 33% drop in the first quarter of this year. Joining us now to discuss this is Agbiz trade economist Safiso Ndombela. Well, before we get to matters agricultural, Safiso, uh, just your um, take on what uh, the finance minister said a couple of hours earlier, that we shouldn't panic because government does have a plan. Yes, um, uh, evening for you. I indeed, um, the Minister of Finance, when you were saying that we shouldn't panic um, much um, because the government have planned and the, to make sure that the economy does rebound back into the positive trajectory. Now, looking specifically from the agricultural sector itself, um, even though we saw a very heavy decline in this quarter of GDP, um, there are two key factors that we can actually contribute to this um, drastic change that is likely more than what we, we expected to be. And one of that is basically the continued um, drought, especially in the Western Cape, and the hailstorm that we saw in the Bumalang, which affected your, your mainly your, your horticultural product and the delayed the summer crop harvest in those areas. And these are um, these are high value commodities within the agricultural contest, which then are mainly export oriented, which affected the trade of the agricultural sector, where we largely generate our foreign earnings due to, to boost the agricultural sector itself. Now, having said that, the the second part of it, then, on the export side of it, you will you will understand that during those those months that fall within the second period, coincided with the months where we have a relatively stronger exchange rate, which affected to a certain extent the revenue generation that we do from the agriculture sector. I mean, if you can look at it from the exchange rate, you compare with what we have in average in August, it was about 16.67 percent in, in in April, stronger than what we currently is about 12.6 um, um, percent stronger than it is. So that also also affected our, our export earnings, which had a, a, a negative impact on the agricultural sector. We, hence, we're seeing these uh, largely negative numbers that we saw in the second quarter contribution in the agricultural sector. Well, I mean, if uh, we have, we continue to have a relatively stronger exchange rate, as you say, and taking into account the fact that the two other contributing factors that you mentioned, which was the drought in the Western Cape and the hailstorms in Pumalanga, which are natural causes that we can't do uh, much about it. Does that mean then that we are doomed and uh, agriculture will continue to, to underperform? Um, not necessarily, because you will know that agriculture is one of those uh, um, sectors that is very sensitive to weather, as you rightfully said. But we also, to a certain extent, have a variety of commodities when you're looking at it from the western part of the country towards the east. So as we move from relatively from the, um, the, the summer crops towards now the winter uh, fruits like the citrus, which you have seen in the first two months now in the third quarter with the numbers will be coming up, they're slightly looking more positive than the numbers we saw on the other side. But also when you start to looking in from the grain side where we have, have some carryover stock and the maize and a little bit of um, uh, surplus that we can expect from the wheat. So these are starting to be positive numbers that we can see making the agriculture sector at least uh, turning out at the tables. N might not necessarily do, to be at a very large ex um, numbers itself, but it will certainly be a much more um, better situation than we currently saw in the second quarter of it. So that's definitely one of the commodities that we will see. Also, within the um, within the animal side of it, especially the dairy industries, we are expecting that to it will have a little bit of more positive impact into the overall agricultural commodities come the third quarter. We are on numbers from us. Of course, I mean agriculture is not the only uh, contributor. I mean other sectors have also uh, been mentioned as possible. Con I mean as contributors uh, among those uh, manufacturing. But I want to take you to a comment made by one. Um, economist and professor who said uh, uh, today, Professor Raymond Parsons, that we have South Africa, and I take it he, he means or he was referring to all of us collectively, that we have greatly uh, underestimated Correct. the economic damage 
of uh, the past dec decade and how long it will realistically take to turn the economy uh, around. If you are now to talk about specifically about agriculture's contribution, would you agree to that with that statement in relation to agriculture? And if so, what do you think we would need to do beyond uh, this uh, this point to, to to demonstrate that we do in fact take uh, seriously what has happened in the past and we determine to ensure that it doesn't happen in the future? To, absolutely. I, I will, to a certain extent, share those sentiments. That, uh, to a certain extent, the, 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 the negative sentiment that have sort of emerged over the last decade has somehow affected the, the business confidence, which means now has affected the level at which investors do uh, invest into our sectors. If you're looking at the numbers from the agricultural sector, we, we've been, um, if you're looking at the share of uh, gross fixed capital formation as a share of the GDP itself, has been really relatively poor over the last five to say, to say ten, 10 years or so, um, and largely because of the confidence that has been uh, affected into that sector. And, and contributing that with also uh, forever and uh, um, uh, uh, unpredictable weather in the, in the sector has uh, coupled the effect on that one. But what we would like to see, and as I said, that the investment, if you're looking at the sector, sitting at around about, on average, about 17%, we would like them to see increasing to at least about 25% as the share of the GDP itself. But what we're starting to see that um, as the clarity around some of the policy uncertainties that are hovering around the sector itself, and also the business confidence to a certain level starting to improve as we see a lot of decisive uh, decision taking up from the public sector, and we're seeing an improving sentiment between the private sector uh, and the government starting to work together and to a certain extent uh, as we're seeing in the job summit that is coming up. We, we, we hope those kind of small decisions and more small moments will build up into momentum that increase is the business confidence into the agrar sector, which will ultimately convert into um, an increased investment. Hence, we will be starting to see the change in the next probably quarters, uh, two quarters or so, um, than which we have seen in the past. Well, speaking of uh, uh, business confidence, which you have just mentioned, there are people who believe that uh, we are where we are today also because of the uh, persistent levels of policy uncertainty around such issues as uh, the land reform debate, uh, for instance, that is currently going on. Do you, do you, do you agree? Uh, um, uh, if you're looking at the police, because at this stage it's still some proposals, but what, what, what you're seeing also if you follow the land debate policy closely, over the couple of last two weeks we have seen an increasing um, um, also um, uh, um, support from the, our international allies, but also seeing a much more um, energy and positive engagement between the leaders of the private sector and the leaders of the ruling party and government itself. We've also seen the president coming up and providing a much more articulative in terms of what kind of, uh, of land that might be targeted um, if the ex land expropriation of that compensation does actually end up being one of the policy tools that will be considered in, in, uh, down the line uh, to fast track or accelerate the land distribution itself. So wh what, we, what we're seeing is, uh, and what, we, um, what has been a sort of a lacking element is, it, is the clarity among some of the policy and also a much more positive engagement in the good fate, so to speak, within the South African uh, Inc., where you're having different social partners uh, from all the formation, whether it's public union or private sector, coming up and taking much more uh, accountability and saying, look, together we can be able to find a common, but it has to be done in the manner that does not necessarily affect the economy, in the manner also that does not undermine the food supply system in the country, and that is constitutionally bound. So I think there's an increasing clarity around those elements now across, um, and there's, which then in uh, 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 tend to result into at least some of the um, um, uh, partners and the leaders increasing confidence to say there will be at least a, a coordinated and an orderly manner of implementation whatever policy that will be adopted um, following the Constitutional Review Committee once it recommends what is the way forward on it.
A quick one before I let you go, uh, Mr. Ndombela. Well, the, the price of fuel uh, has also been cited as another problem um, areas. And from what economists are telling us uh, today, the oil price um, uh, is going to, you know, much upwards uh, for some time to come. How do you think that is uh, going, the rise in petrol, a continuing rise in the price of petrol, I mean of fuel, is going to affect your industry in, in particular going forward? Um, certainly, because um, fuel prices and, and fuel in general, we also I could add in into that basket electricity, are one of the biggest drivers of the production cost within our agricultural sector. Um, so what it does, it tends to, from the inside of us being remaining competitive with our competitors in the international market, it makes us be in a disadvantageous position because our product tends to be relatively more expensive than our competitors, which then reduces the demand for, uh, for our export. And, but also also locally within the domestic market, as you will understand in terms of the structural uh, value chains of the agriculture sector um, in, in the country where we have a lot of product that are produced from the coastal side of the countries but tends to be moved into the inlands for processing and sent back into the coastal um, areas where it can consume. That will also have a, a, a negative impact as it will increase the, the consumer price or the food prices which can also add in into the inflation of the agricultural sector. Having said also that uh, not only just at the fuel prices that are, are actually creeping factors that are affecting the competitiveness and the profitability of the agricultural sector project is also the increasing as you will know that there's also been um, other environmental taxes and the sugar taxes which are all adding up into the cost implications on the agricultural sector. So a composite of these factors are definitely uh, eroding the profitability of the sector and might to a certain extent be some of the factors that might end up also um, affecting the confidence of, of the businesses going forward. Okay, that's where we're going to uh, leave it, Mr. Ndombele. Thank you very much for your time and insights this evening. He is a trade economist with AgBees.